The emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic has severely impacted the lives of seafarers and ship operators alike. In response, national and international organizations concerned with maritime matters and flag, port and labor supply states have issued guidelines and management plans for ship operators to assist them in their efforts to prevent the infection emerging on board their ships. These management plans require the provision of safety materials such as PPE, sanitation gels and disinfectants. In addition, they provide recommendations of how to deal with visitors such as the pilot, port state officials and head office staff, Steve Dawes, agents, inspectors, surveyors, maintenance technicians and delivery personnel. Special recommendations are made to cover the boarding procedures for on-signing crew members, which are detailed in another programme about crew changes. In this programme, we describe the practical protective measures to be implemented on board ship when in port. Differing views are held globally regarding the measures, which are the most appropriate to reduce the COVID-19 infection. These relate to personal protective equipment, social distancing, hygiene and testing. Here we provide the guidance that applies in most ports. Before arriving, the master should obtain the latest available information about COVID-19 from the company, local agents and from the relevant port authority. The master should also ensure that all crew members are fully aware of the precautionary measures to be observed on board. The company will issue guidance as to whether it is safe for a seafarer to go ashore in a particular port. Visitors must be treated strictly in accordance with the requirements of the outbreak management plan that is in operation on board. The first visitor on board is normally the pilot. The management plan recommends that at least one hour before the pilot arrives on board, all equipment on the bridge be disinfected, such as chart table, ECDIS control panel, PPUs, VHF radios, radar control panels and other navigational aids, chairs, binoculars, even pencils and windows using appropriate disinfectants. On arrival, the pilot should be wearing a face mask and disposable gloves. If the pilot is not wearing these, they should be provided. The pilot's temperature must be taken with a non-contact thermometer and the reading should be below 37.8 Celsius for the pilot to be allowed on the bridge. The pilot should then be escorted outside the accommodation area directly to the bridge by a crew member wearing a face mask and gloves. On the bridge, sanitizing gel or a hand washing facility with soap and water should be provided for everyone's use. If possible, the pilot should be offered a separate toilet facility. Only essential personnel should be allowed on the bridge when the pilot is on board, avoiding close contact at all times. The rule is, use a nod or a wave instead of shaking hands. Eating while on the bridge is also to be avoided. If the pilot feels the need to cough or sneeze, ideally he or she should step to the bridge wing or exterior of the wheelhouse away from other individuals. Throughout the transit, the bridge should be wiped down with disinfectant and this protocol should be agreed between the master and the pilot before he comes on board. Once the ship is securely moored, the gangway needs to be prepared for lowering into place. The minimum requirement is that the handrails must be disinfected prior to securing the gangway in position. Sanitizing and disinfecting materials must be available at the gangway or ladder entry point for everyone boarding the ship. The main rule at the top of the gangway is all visitors must wear a face mask. This is to cover the possibility that they may be infected even though not displaying any symptoms. In such circumstances, they can infect others. If required, visitors must complete a visitor health declaration for COVID-19 electronically prior to boarding. Crew members who are designated to receive visitors must protect themselves by wearing face masks, goggles and gloves. 
and be positioned about two meters away from the top of the gangway. Before putting on a face mask, crew members must clean their hands with alcohol-based hand gel or soap and water. The mask must cover the mouth and nose, leaving no gaps between it and the face. While wearing the face mask, it should not be touched by hand. If touched accidentally, clean the hands immediately. Replace it with a new one if it becomes damp and do not reuse single-use masks. When removing it, do so from behind without touching the front and discard it immediately in a closed bin. Clean the hands again with alcohol-based gel or soap and water. The procedure to remove disposable gloves poses certain risks. The first glove can be removed safely with the other gloved hand. To remove the second glove without touching its external surface, place the forefinger of the free hand inside the glove to push it off. You should immediately sanitize the hands or wash them with soap and water. At the top of the gangway, one of the crew members should question all visitors as to their health condition, whilst recording their temperature using a non-contact thermometer. If the visitor is not wearing a face mask and gloves, he or she should be provided with them, along with sanitizing gel for use on the hands. All personal items carried by the visitor should be disinfected. During this time, another crew member should register the details of the visitor and the recorded temperature and provide information about the procedures to be followed on board. No handshake or other physical contact is allowed. A separate specified cloakroom and toilet should be available for use by all visitors, which will be disinfected regularly and once the ship leaves the port. For visitors who may be working on board for several days, a separate mess with a sanitized toilet facility should be provided. It is preferable that no food from ashore should be brought or consumed on board by visitors. If this is unavoidable, no crockery or utensils should be shared. No shore personnel should enter the internal spaces of the vessel, other than the ship's office or stores facilities. All other accommodation doors should be locked. If any visitor needs to enter the accommodation, they should be escorted throughout, face masks worn and social distancing maintained. For delivery staff and maintenance contractors, bringing provisions or spare parts on board, all the handwashing rules and the wearing of face masks apply. Ship's crew members meeting these visitors should also wear face masks and gloves and maintain social distancing. Provisions, spare parts and stores should be well cleaned and disinfected. Ship staff working on the main deck should also maintain social distancing. Likewise, all machinery spaces and areas commonly used by contractors should be disinfected regularly and at least once a day whilst they are on board and after they have disembarked. When dealing with visiting officials, ship's personnel must maintain social distancing, complete paperwork electronically and communicate via VHF or portable radio. A temporary isolated deck office should be used if necessary. Any ship's data that is required for the work of the visitors should be provided as copies, which should be disposed after use. Any garbage or litter from shore must be discarded in a dedicated drum to be landed prior to departure or kept isolated. The health of the ship's crew should be monitored regularly while in port and after sailing and any changes in health reported to the company and the relevant port authority. Once the ship has sailed, all surfaces, equipment, instruments, utilities, public spaces, handrails, catering facilities and toilets touched by the visitors must be disinfected thoroughly. The gangway and pilot ladder must be washed down using soapy water or detergent. Members of the crew can now relax, knowing that they have done everything possible to protect themselves against the coronavirus infection. Further helpful information and guidance is available from Steamship Mutual.